Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna have a quick conversation about lockers. This conversation was brought about from a question from one of you, and I'm kind of just gonna once over her question because it's a long one, but the general idea is basically what's the setup of the lockers looking like, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. Well, first, she said she's just curious um, how the lock lockers for after reception by your bed or in a different room. I know each might be different, but just wanted to see. Um, you guys know my perspective is gonna be Fort Sill perspective. Um, so first things first, from reception to Charlie to our bays, generally the lockers look the same. Okay, um, some of them are more raggedy than others. Some of them are further away from your bed than others, but generally they look the same. Um, we did not get to choose our beds when we first got there. Of course, you're able to kind of mix around depending on your relationship with your drill sergeant and your peers, you can mix your beds around, but they chose our beds for us. They did not want us near our friends at all. Okay, so people that we was cool at reception, yeah, we got to talk to each other. Like my bed, I move, end up moving my bed all the way across the room. So we got to like commune with each other and stuff like that at the end of the day on Sundays and things of that nature. But we did not get to sleep next to each other. Um, so I would say choose a bed that your locker is close to, but we didn't get to pick our bed. So just hopefully your locker is close to your bed. It's going to be in like, like you want your bed to be, you would ideally, you can't choose. So I don't want to tell you ideally, but you want your, you know, your bed to be directly in front of your locker. So you just jump down and start getting ready. It's going to be close. It's going to be like two to three lockers away, but it could be a little further depending on maybe a locker near you is broken or something like that. But, but you're not, your bed's not going to be all the way over here and your locker be across the room. That's not going to happen. So it's going to be in the vicinity that you're in, but it could be closer or not. That just depends. All right. So the next part of the question is how are the locker set up? Now, um, most of the lockers are set up the same way, but when I Googled like the army lockers, I saw a few different lockers. So I know at Fort Seal, they used to have the lockers like on your, you used to be able to have your weapon with you in your locker. They no longer do that because there was an incident there. Um, so the, your weapon is locked away in the weapons locker. And I put a picture of that for you on the screen. The lockers for the most part, like I said, all look the same from reception to Charlie to my actual battery. They all look the same. So I'm guessing that all of the lockers look exactly the same that they've replaced them all from the old ones. And then I have, so I couldn't actually find like the exact picture. You'll get a general idea. It's not like your normal like high school locker. It's bigger. It's able to fit all of your stuff. So I drew a little picture of it and these are just the doors, okay? So she did ask about bringing a mirror and I'm gonna show you, you don't need a mirror. Um, there is a mirror right here on the wall. And then inside of the lockers, there's these little things right here. I used it to hang my lock on it when my lock wasn't in use. Um, I, you're not allowed to hang, you, you hang your towels on your bed. Like there's a way that you have to do everything and you have to have your towels in like, they call it military fashion, okay? You have to have your towels and stuff where they say put them. So you can't necessarily like have stuff hanging here. Um, you probably get in trouble for that. And you see this little thing right here, I put chart. There's actually a graph of how this locker is supposed to look within the locker. Now, I wouldn't really worry about this, just as long as your locker is actually clean. But, you know, some of the drill sergeants might be more strict about it. Our drill sergeants were not. They wanted the locker to be clean, okay? And like, look like you in the military. And of course, they pointed out people whose lockers were exceptional, and they really destroyed people's lockers who were not, like pulling stuff all over the place. You can have a clean locker and still get your stuff pulled out. But I never got my stuff empty because I made sure my locker was clean. Our boots go at the top here, and I just put a bunch of stuff here, like backpacks. They're gonna issue you so much military stuff that you're not really gonna have a lot of room for your things which is why I said don't bring don't bring unnecessary things okay so you will have all military stuff right here probably all military stuff right here and then there's gonna be a little like a little drawer set okay the head let's say it had four drawers in it the top drawer was what we call your personal drawer so you can fit all your goodies in it I would not pack more things that can fit in your personal drawer because all of that stuff is gonna have to go in the, in the other bag and I'm gonna tell you about that in a second so here's your personal drawer and then you have like your socks and underwear go in one drawer your PT uniform and your the, the shirt like I have on goes in one drawer so everything is like and you know everything's lined up the way it should be so if you don't bring excess things you won't have any trouble about where should you put things because they make it very clear where things go and the only only drawer that doesn't have like a requirement of how it needs to be 
organized is your personal drawer. Um, and then there's a, I didn't put this on here, but at the top here, there's a shelf. So up here, inside the locker, there's a shelf. And you can put like, I put my all my stuff to write my letters in there. You can put an extra pair of boots there. I still use it as my personal space, even though, like I said, it depends on your drill sergeant. It depends on how neat your locker is in it too. Because if you don't have your locker neat, they're gonna start saying stuff about why you have so much stuff and things like that. So I would just keep that under wraps. But like I said, you follow the packing list and you're not bringing all this extra stuff. You should have more than enough space um, let me get to the other question that she asked. Um, I got a couple of hang, hanging style clothespins for emergency washing. Um, I personally, let, let's go here since you said something about it. I wouldn't hang any of my personal stuff up there in that locker, okay? I wouldn't hang any underwear there. Anything that you would be embarrassed about them throwing and telling everybody about, keep your stuff neat and tucked away. Don't put nothing, don't hang nothing nowhere, okay? Don't hang nothing up. The only thing that needs to be hanging is your uh, clothes and your washcloths in the way that they said. Because they're not going to be going through your dirty clothes. But I would not hang any dirty clothes up there in that locker, baby. That is cause for embarrassment. And while I'm talking about that, hold on. Let me let me show you. I'm just going to show you what the end of the bunk bed looks like. Okay. So, so here we have our bunk beds, right? Two beds like this. And then this is the side part of the bed. So now you see it's the side part of the bed. Let me draw what it looks like if it was facing towards us, okay? So let's just pretend like this is not, you know, I'm trying to draw a 3D, but I can't draw a 3D. So this is the side part of the bed. And there's one little, you know, the post that, that helps you walk up there. And then there's the other, the stair that helps you walk up there. So you want to tie your laundry bag, the laundry bag that they're going to give you in reception. It has to be, it's mandatory. That's a part of the military fashion of everyone's bed looking the same. Your laundry bag is gonna be tied on there in the way that your bay agrees to have it tied on there and your towels are gonna to be both hanging on each other in a military fashion on this bed. So your extra clothes, they have all that worked out. Your extra clothes gonna be, do not get caught with dirty clothes in your locker, you're gonna get in trouble. Have them dirty clothes where they said they're supposed to be and that is in that bag not mesh bag it's a military bag in the laundry bag you need to put it in there okay so don't worry about all this little stuff like they understand this is like like i said it's a new life they're trying to teach people how to live and things like that and, and even though they don't really do a good job at it it's the way it goes and they have all those little kinks worked out like they understand it's not they're it's not totally unreasonable in the sense of like you know you don't have a place to put your dirty clothes you have laundry days and all that kind of good stuff so Hold on, let me go finish. Um, I remember you mentioning something about a drawer that's in your locker. I just told you about that. Um, the little compartment drawer that you, girl, you just make sure to keep it clean. I will be able to keep things in my locker in a Ziploc bag, um, i.e. sports bra. Like I said, those, those drawers, there is a way that they're supposed to be. Like the shirts are supposed to be folded a certain way. Your PT shirt is supposed to be rolled in there. Like you have to follow the graph of how it goes. You'll see it when you get there. It's, they're not gonna keep it a secret from you. I know you also mentioned your extra hygiene items will be stored away in a civilian location and will we just have to inquire when we need it? So I take it they don't allow you to have extra wipes, for example, bar of soap, liquid, and just sitting on a shelf in your locker. So I mentioned to you, you have those two spaces. You have that shelf up there. You have your personal drawer. As long as all their stuff is in its place, they're not really going to be so pressed about how you're doing things like that, like how much extra stuff you're having. But you don't need to have too much extra stuff. Like you need to have enough to last... Um, you the 10 weeks so yes you can put extra things you don't have to take everything out of your personal bag you don't but also with that in mind don't think you're going to be bothering them about going to your personal locker because they are at liberty to say no so you know let's say you get to go in your personal locker every Sunday take enough stuff to last like they're not unreasonable take enough stuff out of your bag to last you and you can keep a little extra stuff there but also you get a chance to go to the px as well so things like they did have wipes at the px you can bring wipes um she also asked about lysol wipes if you're gonna bring lysol wipes what i would do is put it inside of a baggie like a sandwich bag do not keep it in the lysol container because they're gonna feel like you're trying to be all prissy and they're gonna make you throw it away just saying just saying okay you know i'm just saying um let me see if i missed anything in that question uh the locker the lock color does not matter hold on i got my lock let me show you hold on and i know i mentioned this stuff before but i mean there's nothing wrong with me mentioning it again so i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so 
as long as I address that, let's make sure I address that other part, which was um, there is room for you to have extra stuff. Just make sure it's in a military fashion. It's neat. It's going to be cool. Don't bring enough for like a family of 10. Okay. Um, if you really think about it, a bar of soap, you only need one bar of soap in your locker. I had two, but you only really need one. Okay. If you know, before you, before you need to buy another one, just, just make sure your locker doesn't like a pack rat locker, locker because you're going to get in trouble for it. So, excuse me. I ran into the back. I'm a lot of breath. Uh, but here's my little bag. I want to show you this too. I found it when I was in the back. So something like this, I had inside of my personal drawer, everything in the bag like this. That way, if I was told to pack up my stuff, which they, they make you do, pack up all your stuff, make sure everything is out this locker and head downstairs because for some reason, y'all got evicted from your bed because somebody did something stupid. You wanna make sure everything, you don't want stuff just laid out, okay? You wanna make sure everything is ready to move at a moment's notice. So I kept, kept everything in this little bag like this. Like this bag literally came from basic training and I would just sit it inside of there. Um, and this is this is my little like letter writing thing. So I just had everything ready. I was I was very ready. Okay, I'm a very ready girl. Another thing I want to show you is notebooks because she asked if the notebook color matter. I bought this notebook right here to put in my OC pocket. I would OCP pocket. I would probably not do this because it looks all cutesy, but they weren't really paying attention to it. This was just to to take like a little quick note in case. This was the one that gave us at reception. So you know. Here it is. This is the one they gave us. I would I would bring a big one and I will also, like I said before, bring something small so you can keep with you to pretend like you're writing and studying or actually be writing and studying when they tell you you need to do so. Okay, and the next thing is, she asked, does the lock of color matter? The lock color matter, it does not. Here's the lock that I had. I have this linked in my Amazon store. It is the best lock to have, in my opinion. That little lock, that little school lock that you used to have to take this thing and roll it around. Girl, don't you get that thing? Because they give you hit time. Do you have a certain time that you have to be doing certain things? If they tell you you better be downstairs fully dressed in two minutes and they know you can't do it because everybody running and doing all this kind of stuff, you want to pretend like you can do it and you need to have a lock that you can open quickly. And the thing about this is, so let's say, let's say I set the code, right? You set the code, it's going to open. So what you want to do is like leave one of the little things off, like leave a code off. So all I have to do to open my lock is just change one number, open it, boom, I'm done. Okay. A lot of time people were like on that little, the one you have to twist, they were writing that combination on the back and the drill sergeant would come in there and destroy, literally destroy the bay, have their stuff tipped all over the place to our drill sergeant. I will say her name on here. I heard she's on social media, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, our drill sergeant, the, they had one lady specifically, she loved tearing up the bays. And I think she liked tearing up the bays because she had a social media and she wanted to like show that this is really what we do. But they just tore up the bays because they could. They would tip over the beds. Like it would be a total disaster. And one thing that you can do to reduce the disaster on your behalf is make sure your locker is locked. Okay, past the first day, none of your stuff should be getting thrown all over the place. At the very least, you might have to pick up your laundry bag and your towel, but at no point in time should your locker be getting emptied out because you left it open or you left the combination on the back. So be smart when choosing what lock to get. I also would not get a lock with a key because you're doing so much stuff. You have to be moving so much that you very well might be one of the people who lost the key and then they're going to have to go in there and cut your lock and then you don't have to learn a new combination with that whole twisting thing. It's stressful. Get you a lock like this. I bought two of them because at one point in time I misplaced one and then I had the other one to hang on. This is what I did. I hung my locker. Like I said, when I wasn't using it and I hung my extra locker on this little thing right here in the locker. So just... I'm just, I'm warning you. I didn't want you, okay? Now, if you go there and you don't bring a lock like this, that's your business. Don't, come back and say, she warned y'all. She warned y'all, okay? So I think that's all her questions. Let me just make sure. Uh, oh, the flashlight. So she also asked about the flashlight. Flashlight color does not matter. However, comma, however, they want everyone to look the same. So you have to keep that in mind. So if you have something that looks different, um, 
you might get in trouble. And if you have something that different that have, if you have something that's different that doesn't function like it's supposed to, to, you might have to throw it away. So one thing that it has to have is a red light on it. I told you guys that I would stick to lights that you can purchase at the PX and the light that I showed you in my Amazon store because it's the one that you can purchase at the PX. If you can't purchase it at the PX, the likelihood of you being able to have it as far as the flashlight and stuff like that, you know, you want it to look like everyone else's. That's, that's the only thing. You want to look like everyone else's, so black, the army green, don't get nothing crazy, okay? I did want a smaller one because I use it to read at night. I told you I got the one with the lantern on it. It needs to have a red light because when you're out in the field, you're not allowed to use white light. You have to use red. So if you got a flashlight that you bought that doesn't have red light on it, well, you're not going to be able to use it. And I don't mean one that has to go to too white to go to red. It needs to automatically be able to function as a red light. It don't have it don't need to be switch to white then red like press a button it needs to go to red automatically so make sure your flashlight does that like i said the one that i suggested does and that's gonna be it for today's video as always if you have a question ask a question and i'll see y'all later